Please, if you can't tell. And um, we started getting nervous, and we said, uh, you know what? There could be bears up here, which there probably could have been bears. So Justin and I said, let's let's just uh, let's kneel down and say a prayer. So we said a prayer. Please, Heavenly Father, don't let any bears get us and eat us and kill us. And we hopped up, and we started up the hill again, and we went for about um, 15 minutes, and then we started getting nervous again, which was good. We, we were listening, and we thought, okay, we need to do something about this. So we knelt down, and uh, we said, there could be wolves up here, so Heavenly Father, please don't let any wolves attack us, or eat us, or destroy us. And we hiked about another 15 minutes. I I'm sure it wasn't 15, but for the sake of the story, it's easier to tell if it's in 15-minute increments. Because that's about how long this song is going to be, if I tell this whole story. So, we knelt down again after about 15 minutes. Really, yes, it's a story, okay? <laughs> the heart of it is true. We were worried about eagles and owls. So we prayed, Heavenly Father, please don't let eagles and owls get us. We also were worried about badgers, so we knelt down, please, and we thought, don't let any badgers come and kill us. <laughs> There's one thing we didn't pray for, though. And Justin and I, we love to make sound effects when we would jump off of things. We got to this forest that was in the middle of, of our path, and we wanted to go really high on this mountain before it was too dark, and so we thought the only way to get, get up there quickly is to go through this forest, and it was heavily forested, lot, lots of trees. That's why it's called a forest. And we, we were walking along, and we saw this felled tree. That was, it was a huge tree. We had to climb, use our arms to climb up on top of it, but it was laying down, and we ran along it. Justin was in the front, and we ran along it. And then Justin jumped off the edge, and as you jump, you have to make the noise. I don't know why, but you do that when you jump. It, it makes it so it doesn't hurt your knees as much. And so Justin jumped off, did a super sweet side thing, landed it, I'm right behind him. I jump off and go, and land, <laughs> sweet, sweet. And all of a sudden I hear Satan laughing behind me. That's really what I thought it was. Maybe it was Satan's wife, because it was kind of high pitched. He, I'm sure he has a wife. I, I don't know. Okay, so you guys will teach that in Sunday school tomorrow. Kirby said, Satan has a wife. No, he doesn't. So I turn around, and it's a mountain of bees. We had landed right in the middle of a angry bee oh. hive that was using that whole tree Dang. as part of its nest. And I started screaming like a girl because my voice hadn't changed yet. <laughs> but I would have screamed like a girl even if my voice had changed. And they started coming in. I got at least a hundred stings. And I'm screaming and crying. And I, uh, at this time in my life, I had, uh, I had glasses. And they were super thick glasses. Not, not the lenses, but but the, uh, the frames, because I was a, I was like messy Marvin. I would break things really easily, so my parents would, my, my lenses were about ten times thicker than my, no, sorry, my frames were ten times thicker than my glasses. So you can imagine what that looked like. I, I didn't look super cool. I could not have come up to Ogden and survive. <laughs> And so as those bees were stinging me and destroying me and trying to take my flesh, I'm screaming and crying and I accidentally wiped my glasses right so they landed in the middle of the nest. Oh, oh no. And I thought, oh crap, I'm going to get in so much trouble. But we run out of the forest and there's a small little, it was a crick, because I'm from Evanston. It was a crick about an inch deep and an inch wide. And I, I don't know why I thought rolling in the crick would make bees go away, but it did. So if you're ever stung, find water and roll in it. And so the bees, we, we catch our breath. I, I'm blowing stingers out and, and I'm crying. And I said, Justin, we got to go back here. We got to get my glasses. I'm going to be in so much trouble. You got to go get them, man. Please, can you go get them? I, I'm too traumatized. And so Justin said, oh, all right, man. So we, we got to figure something out how we can get in there. So I took off all of my clothes except for my boxers because that's what cool granolas wore. I had just transferred from 
whitey tidies to boxers. All in ninth grade. That was a great year. And so Justin had on uh, the poncho that Chad had sent home, and he had it tied around his head, and then he had my pants his arms through both legs of my pants and they were tied at the end so nothing could, could sting him and uh, so Justin went in there and about five minutes passed and then he comes out and, he's, and I'm still crying oh, I'm so in trouble oh, I got stung by a bunch of bees <laughs> Justin came out and said I couldn't find him man your glasses are gone and uh, I said oh, alright well, well let's start going down the hill and as uh, we're starting to derobe him, I'm still just in my boxers. There's a man coming down on a horse, down uh, following the creek, I guess. <laughs> and he saw a boy just in his boxers crying, <laughs> and another boy with pants tied on his hands. <laughs> and if I saw that now, I'd say, uh, "Do you guys need anything? What's, are you okay?" He just kept going. He didn't offer to help or anything. So, years passed. I never got my glasses back. I got in a lot of trouble for, for losing another pair of glasses, for breaking another pair. It was about four years ago. Jess and I were together at Christmas time, and we're, our families are together, and we're just laughing and reminiscing about old times. And, and I told the story before, and, and some people just didn't believe me. And so I thought, maybe I dreamt that. Maybe that didn't happen. And so I wanted to confirm it with Justin. And he said, oh, yeah, man, that was so crazy. And I remember I went into the hive all covered up. And there were bees everywhere, bees flying all the way around me. And I saw your glasses, and I actually touched them with your pant leg. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do him a favor and leave him here. Because he said, you look That's like such terrible. a dwarf in those glasses. That's terrible. So I don't know if it was because of all the bee stings or what, but a uh, miracle occurred. I don't have glasses anymore. My, my eyesight corrected itself, thanks to the bees. So I guess the moral of this story is, is no matter what, you should always pray for bees. All right, that's my time. <laughs>